video is going to look at the black presence in the medieval era. In this era, black people are used to kind of symbolise difference. Uh, it's still, it was more important to medieval people, things like your religion and your class structure rather than your race. So that's just something to be aware of while we're looking through all of these. So here we have the first ever illustration of a black person. Now it's shown in a shorthand version of the Doomsday Book, uh, which was used to collect taxes. And this was illustrated and written in about the mid 13th century, so around about 1250. Uh, and this would have been given to the king. So the fact that there is a drawing of a black person going to a king shows that there would be awareness of a black presence in England at the time. But in this whole page, there is no mention of anyone being African or anything like that. Obviously, they use quite derogatory terminology than we would use nowadays, but there's no mention of it at all. And some of the other drawings on the page are about mythical beings, you know, like um, unicorns and things like that. So we don't know for sure if this image is based on a real person, uh, but we have that quite a lot in medieval history, as I'm sure you can imagine. However, um, he is drawn wearing short robes over hose, which are like tights, and that traditionally represents a lower social status. So the longer your robes are in medieval drawings, the higher up you are in society. Uh, also, if you look really, really closely, you will notice uh, his, kind of his hose, his tights are striped. They're two different colours. They're blue and red. Um, some historians have used that to suggest, again, negative feelings about black people in the medieval era, because there's a verse in the Bible that says wearing clothes of two different colours goes against God. So this drawing of a black person is really important and really significant because it's the first one showing black heritage. But you can also see the negative connotations of the low social status, and the suggestion of the artist that he'll be going to hell because he's wearing two different types of clothing. Well, Christianity then comes to Europe after the Roman invasion and spreads very, very quickly. And we end up seeing a trend, particularly in the early 1500s, uh, that shows one of the three wise men that visit Jesus as being black. And this is in loads of different artists interpretations of what happens when Jesus is born and historians think that this is used to actually show the appeal of Christianity across the world uh, therefore making it more attractive to get people to convert rather than it just being it's a white religion so that's why some historians suggest they start using a black man at the birth of Christ now, we also have the legend of King Arthur. Now, no one actually knows if Arthur and his knights at the round table, at Camelot, doing all those deeds. Um, we don't know if they're real people, uh, but whatever is the truth, uh, it's developed into being this fantastic legend about sword fights, uh, queens, wizards, uh, really quite dramatic stuff in the legend of King Arthur. But in one of the original versions, uh, and since then it's been written and rewritten so many times, and the one black character has been written out of later tales. But in one of the earliest versions, they talk about uh, a knight to King Arthur whose, and I quote, teeth were as white as chalk, but otherwise he was all black. So obviously, whenever the first legend, or indeed the true King Arthur, existed, there were black people in England. We also have the first black abbot called Hadrian. Uh, so an abbot is someone important in the church. And in the year 668, he came with another man, and that man becomes Archbishop of Canterbury, which is the most important churchman in England. Uh, and Hadrian's like his second in command. And we know about him from Bede, who is a famous chronicler of the medieval era. Uh, and I always see Bede a bit like a medieval BBC News because he tends to know um, about a lot of stuff going on. 
And he writes about Hadrian as being of African race, uh, but we, he doesn't specify. We think now he's from Libya because he describes a type of bird that only lives there, but that's only historians using their inference skills. We don't know for certain. Uh, he's very well educated, is Hadrian, and he's even reprimanded once by the uh, uh, by the Archbishop of Canterbury for choosing to study in Ireland rather than in Kent, which was the religious kind of centre of England. Uh, that being said, uh, he stayed in England for about 40 years and he even set up his own school. So if you want to take this further, um, looking at the medieval era, there is, and again the link is in the description, um, just this article online about physical painted images of black people in medieval Europe. I've not included some of them in this video because we're focusing on British history and English history, but it's still really quite interesting to see the level of detail and think about why these artists chose to depict these black characters the way they have. So that's a really good one to go and have a look at in your free time. Hope you enjoyed.